All right, and we are live. Welcome everybody to today's free webinar provided to you by Junior Achievement of New Jersey. Today's session is all about building and establishing credit. And when, what we mean by credit is good credit. At Junior Achievement, we really believe in empowering the New Jersey community to really being their best selves, but also their best financial selves and how to stay financially independent and responsible. All session content is derived from our JA Finance Park curriculum. Now, before we get into today's content, let's go over some housekeeping. The video platform that we are using allows us to communicate through the chat box and you'll see the chat box feature on the right hand side of your screen. All lines are muted except for myself and today's panelists, which we'll be introducing shortly. And just a heads up, this meeting is being recorded and will be made available for future use. Now at this point, let's get comfortable using that chat box. Say some hello to us and tell us who you are, where you're from, or what school you go to. We will be using this feature throughout the entire presentation. So don't, uh, don't feel shy, say hello. Um, and again, we're really happy to be here with all of you today. Now let's look at our agenda. Um, my name is Mia Morris, and I am the Senior Director of our Capstone and Program Operations here at Junior Achievement. And we also have uh, my great colleague, Alan, who is our JA intern. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working with him, and he's going to be walking us through on how to build and also establish credit. There will be a few times where we'll be using our phones or our web browser on our laptop to play a game. Um, and also, if we have time at the end, there will be a Q&A. So now I have the pleasure of introducing Alan. Um, he is a driven young man who has been a junior achievement student, a high school hero, and now he's a freshman in college. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Alan. Thank you, Mia. Hi, my name is Alan Oriana, and I'm a freshman at Villanova University. I'm a business major pursuing a degree in management information systems and business communications. I'm from Newark, New Jersey, and I started interning for Junior Achievement this year. I like to play sports, listen to music, and watch movies. My fun fact is that I help rehabilitate rehabilitate dogs at my local animal shelter, and I can identify almost any breed of any dog. Okay, so starting off, what is credit? Credit is the amount of financial trust extended to a person or a business by a lender. It, is, it offers the opportunity to establish a good credit history. It offers the ability to track expenditures and increases your financial flexibility. It is important to keep in mind that credit is not free money as it needs to be paid back. If used incorrectly, it may lead to bankruptcy and or foreclosure, and it is prone to being charged interest. Okay, so how is credit different than debit? Debit is an amount deducted from a bank account. It allows for an immediate electronic transfer of money from a cardholder savings or checkings account. Debit is also referred to as a buy now, pay now method type. When a debit card is used, the amount of money is immediately subtracted from the account. Okay, so before we really dive into the rest of today's content, I'm going to turn it over to Mia for an exercise to see our understanding of credit. All right, thank you, Alan. So, on the screen, we have a link and a code, and we're just gonna play a quick little game using quiz. Um, so if everybody could use your phone or your web browser, you know, open up another tab and go to joinmyquiz.com. And I'm currently entering that in the chat box, and the code is 111215. 
So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen for one second because I'm going to go and pull up the scheme. And again, there's no right or wrong question like answers here. You know, we just want to have just a basic idea of what everybody's knowledge is when it comes to different things about credit. Um, so I'm going to give everybody a few more seconds to join. So we got a few folks here. I'll just give it a couple more seconds for more folks to join us and then we'll get started. All right, I'm happy to see so many people joining. This is great. All right, so joinmyquiz.com, enter code 111215. All right, so now let's let's play the game. Let's see where everybody's at with all things credit. So I'm gonna click start. Now this is instructor led, so you won't be able to go to the next question until I prompt. Um, so, just keep that in mind. I will be giving everybody about 10 to 15 seconds or so to answer each question. Now, the questions are, are, are going to be either true or false. And then for some, we'll be giving an explanation as to why they're true or why they're false. So, all right, everybody, let's play this game. So, I'm going to press start. Let me show up the music here. All right, so a debit card is just another name for a credit card. Let's see. Let's wait till everybody answers. So again, a debit card is just another name for a credit card. All right, so a debit card is just another name for a credit card. That is false. Using a debit card is when you have the money in your checking or savings account. Using a credit card is when you prefer to pay later. So great job, everybody. Let's go on to the next question. All right. Here we go. All right, next question. Debit means withdrawal or deduction? Oh, we got some fast fingers here. This is great. Debit means withdrawal or deduction? All right, a couple more seconds. All right, we got five seconds left. Great job, everybody. Again, there's no wrong answers here, so time's up. All right, so debit means withdrawal or deduction, and that, that is true. All right, so let's move on to our next question. All right, here we go. Debit card holders are charged interest each time they swipe their cards. So again, debit card holders are charged interest each time they swipe their cards. Is that true or false? Give it a couple more seconds, just a few more folks. All right, let's proceed to the next one. Time's up. All right, so debit card holders are charged interest each time they swipe their cards. That is false. Money is immediately subtracted from a checking or savings account. It is not a loan. All right, great job, everybody. Let's go on to the next question. 
All right. Credit cards are a buy now, pay now payment option. Again, credit cards are a buy now, pay now payment option. Is that true or false? Give everybody a few more seconds. Right, we got five seconds left. All right, time's up. So credit cards are a buy now, pay now payment option. It's false. Credit cards are a buy now, pay when the bill comes type of payment. Great job, everybody. On to the next question. So, credit cards are often a safe way to pay for online purchases. So again, credit cards are often a safe way to pay for online purchases. Is this true or false? I will give it a couple more seconds for everybody to answer. Credit cards are often a safe way to pay for online purchases. True or false? We got five more seconds and time's up. All right, so the answer to that, it's true. There's a lot of um, insurance that goes behind credit cards when you have one, um, so great job. Let's go on to the next question. All right, next question. Credit cards are free money. Credit cards are free money. Is this true or false? Credit cards are free money. Let's see, we'll give it a couple more seconds. Few more seconds. Credit cards are free money. True. False. Oh, we got five seconds left. All right, time's up. Credit cards are free money. False. It would be great if it was true, but it's not. Credit is a loan that must be paid back. Great job, everybody. All right, so moving on to our last question. Here we go. There are consequences if you can't pay for the things you buy, true or false. There are consequences if you can't pay for the things you buy. Do you think that's true or false? A lot of fast fingers here, this is great. We'll just give it a couple more seconds for everybody to answer. All right, 10 more seconds. Loving everybody's little icons, or little profile images, lots of personalities here, this is great. All right, so there are consequences if you can't pay for the things you buy. It is true, late fees and penalties. Your accounts can be turned over to debt collectors, possible repossession of your vehicles bankruptcy or loss of home. So there are consequences if you buy things that you cannot pay for. So great job, everybody. This was great. Um, loved everyone's participation in this. So now we're gonna go back to our regular scheduled program. So Alan, back to you. Thank you, Mia. We're gonna look at the importance of credit. So having a good credit score shows your willingness and ability to make payments. The higher the score, the more confidence a creditor will have that you will pay them back. 
if you have a good credit score, it will offer you lower interest rates. You can easily secure housing and banks and lenders are more likely to approve your credit applications. So this means if you're applying for credit cards, loans, or mortgages. Okay, so are you financially fit? These are some questions that you should ask yourself if you're looking into getting a credit card. So do you pay your bills on time? Do you miss payments? How many credit accounts do you have? Have you paid off a loan before? Are you maxed out? Are you near your credit limit? Do you have outstanding debt? If so, how much? Okay, so now looking at the three different types of credit reporting agencies, we have Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. All three of these credit reporting agencies provide you with your credit information. Since the number of hard inquiries is a factor in calculating your credit score, this could produce different different score numbers between each of the credit reporting agencies. All three agencies must provide consumers with a free copy of their credit report upon request once every 12 months by law. Lenders and creditors have the ability to pull this report. Okay, so for credit score, a credit score ranges from a 300 to an 850. So in the chat box, what do you think the average score is? And remember, there are no wrong answers. We'll just give everybody a minute to type those in. Okay, 670, 530. We'll just give a minute for everybody to type in what they think the average score is. Okay, so I'm seeing between 500 and 600, 670 to 680, 700. Okay, we'll go on to the next slide. These are really great answers, guys. Okay, so for our FICO credit score, FICO is an acronym for the Fair Isaac Corporation founded in 1956 by engineer Bill Fair and mathematician Earl Isaac. Together, they developed the formula for the FICO score. The FICO score is the credit risk measurement that is most used around the world. Okay, so here we have a chart of the credit type and the score range. So if we have a bad credit type, it's a score range from 300 to 599. A fair is a score from 600 to 659. A fair to good credit type is a score from a 660 to a 719. And a very good to excellent credit type is a score range from 720 to 850. And remember, a credit score is a standardized measurement of the potential to repay a debt. Okay, so what goes into this FICO score calculation? Here we have that 10% of your score is dedicated to new credit, 10% is dedicated to the types of credit used, 15% is the length of the credit history, 30% is the amounts owed, and 35% is the payment history. So as we can see the breakdown here, a big chunk in your FICO score calculation is the amounts owed and the payment history. Okay, so we're gonna go into utilization. It is a good rule of thumb to use only up to 30% of your credit limit. If you use over 30%, you have a possibility of negatively impacting your credit score. This means if your credit card limit is $1,000, you should try and spend no more than $300. Okay, so what makes a positive credit history? So first we need to pick a credit card carefully. So we look for a credit card that offers no annual fees and that offers a low interest rate. We can use that credit to build a payment history and we shouldn't charge more than what we can pay. 
You should pay your bills on time without skipping any payments and stay within your 30% credit utilization rate. Jay-Z said in an interview that you, if you can't afford something, that you can't afford something unless you buy it twice. So that's something that to keep in mind when forming these habits. Okay, so what makes a negative credit history? If you're constantly making late payments, if you're ex exceeding your credit limit, if you're applying for credit frequently, so taking out multiple credit cards, if you're having an account turned over to a collection agency, so if you have outstanding medical bills, phone bills, car loans, student loans that haven't been paid, this all gets recorded and it can negatively impact your credit history. Okay, so we're gonna go into credit reports. A credit report is a record of someone's financial information, including previous addresses, social security number, current and previous employers, your estimated income, credit card accounts with balance records and payment history, as well as any loan information. Here is a standard credit report. So as we can see at the top here, we have your personal information, which would include your address, your name, your social security number, your date of birth and your phone number. Then we have your employment information. Then we have your credit account information and it's in general, a snapshot of your credit standing. Okay, so right. Mia, do you have a resource you'd like to share with the participants? Oh, thank you so much, Alan. So we're learning a lot about credit, right? And I'm sure it's a lot of it's a lot of great information, but it might be a little overwhelming. But you're also you might be curious to see what your credit report looks like. So up on the screen is annualcreditreport.com. And uh, Alan just added that into the chat box. So I do advise everybody to, if you have never pulled your credit report, maybe, you know, after today's session, maybe today's the day, just to get an idea of what your credit is like and what kind of information is on your credit report. So we're gonna be moving on and we're just gonna have a little bit of a credit scavenger hunt. Um, so I'm going to walk us through a series of eight questions. And as I'm asking the questions, Alan will be putting them into the chat box. But basically, we're going to just like a like an in person scavenger hunt, we're going to have a virtual one. So we're going to be investigating certain aspects of this credit card statement. So again, as I go through the questions, please add your responses to the chat box. And Alan will be reading off the answers as we go through each question. So, hope everybody's ready, but, all right. The first question is, what is the date of the statement? So again, what is the date of the credit card statement up on the screen? Give everybody a couple seconds to answer. Okay, I see some responses. February 13, 2019. February 13, 2019. Another February 13, 2019. All right, well, it looks everybody's uh, on the money with this one. It is February 13th. 2019. Great job, everybody. So now we're going to be looking at what is the annual percentage rate, which is also known as APR. On the credit card statement, what is the percentage rate, also known as APR? Give everybody a couple seconds to add their thoughts into the chat box. 
Okay, we have 19 .8%, 19.8%, 19.8%, 19.8%, 19.8%. All right, it looks like everybody can find that. That's awesome. So, yes, the APR annual percentage rate for purchases is 19.8%. However, for cash advances, it is 6.48%. So great job, everybody. All right, so our next question, what is the new balance? What is the new balance on this credit card statement? Okay, so I'm seeing 125 and 24 cents, 125 and 24 cents, 125 and 24 cents. All right, awesome. So yes, you're all correct. The new balance on this credit card statement is $125 and 24 cents. All right, so our next question how many payments were made during the billing cycle? So again, how many payments were made during the billing cycle? Give everybody a couple more seconds. How many payments were made during the billing cycle? Remember, um, it's payments. How many payments were made during this billing cycle? Okay, so I'm seeing six, one, six, five payments. All right, so for this one, this was a little tricky, right? Because there's a lot up on the screen. So how many payments were made during the billing cycle? There was just one. There was one payment of $168.80. However, there was one, two, three, four, five. There were five different purchases made during the billing cycle. So. I know that's why a lot of you had put six, but there was just one payment made and then five different purchases. So great job, everybody. You know, we're all learning as we go. So, all right. So I had skipped over a question. So my apologies, Alan, um, but I'm going to go back to it. What was the previous balance? What was the previous balance on this credit card statement? Okay, so we have 294 and 4 cents, 168 with 60 with 80 cents, 168 with 80 cents. All right, so great job. The correct answer is $168.80 was the previous balance. All right, so let's go on to the next question. Um, were there any charges for late payments? Were there any charges for late payments during this credit card billing cycle? And if so, how much were the charges? So we're looking for, were there any late payments, any late charges um, for late payments? Okay, so we have no, no late charges, no late charges, no. All right, great job. The answer is no, there were no late charges. Um, our friend here, John Joe, had paid on time, which is great. That's, uh, that's the goal, is always to pay on time. All right, so the next question is, what is the total amount of available credit? What is the total amount of available credit?
we have 1,074 with 76 cents, 1,074 with 76 cents. Thousand seventy four and seventy six cents. You guys are really good at this virtual scavenger hunt. Um, yes, the correct answer is the total amount of available credit is one thousand seventy four dollars and seventy six cents. Great job. All right, so last question Where should the payment be sent to? If this person is not paying online, which, you know, online banking is, um, is accessible to us, right? Um, but where should the payment be sent if you are not paying online? Okay, so we have box one, two, three, four, any town USA. Box 1234, Anytime USA. All right. The answer is the payment should be sent to, and you guys are right, Box 1234, and that's in any town USA. Great job. Now I'm going to throw, throw you guys a little curveball here. What is the account number on this credit card statement? What's the account number on the credit card statement? There's a lot of numbers on here, but we're looking for that account number. All right, I see a few coming in. All right, so the account number is at the top left-hand side of the screen, which is 4125239412. All right, great job, guys. So, one more question is, what is the credit line for this credit card? What is the max credit line that this can use for his credit card. So we have thousand two hundred, thousand two hundred, thousand two hundred. All right, nice job, guys. Yep, the credit line is 1200. And, you know, the credit line means that this John Doe was approved for a credit card that goes up to $1,200. Now, what that means is that if he has to go over $1,200, he, he can't because his credit limit is $1,200. So great job. And let's do one last question. What's the minimum payment due for his credit card? What's the minimum payment due each month for his credit card? So we have $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $
you know, you might have some thoughts, comments, concerns, you know, when it comes to learning more about your credit or, you know, credit reports or credit scores or what certain terms mean. Um, so add them in the chat box. Um, you can send them to um, all panelists, which include myself and Alan, or you can just send it to just the host, which is me, I'm the tech host here. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a bit, because I did see that there were some great comments that came into the chat box. So I'm gonna just go ahead and read off some of those. Um, all right, so our first question is, what are some common scams to look out for? What are some red flags to look out for? Um, and that's a that's a great question. And Alan, if that's okay, I'll take this one. Um, yeah, that's fine. So common scams. Um, all right. So I, I don't want to you know date myself, but when I was a freshman in college. Um, I had gone to Philadelphia University in Pennsylvania, which is no longer in existence. They actually changed their name, but it was near Temple. Um, and, you know, gearing up to enter my freshman year, I had tons of different jobs because I wanted to save up all this money because I knew that going to college is a great choice. However, it's an expensive choice, especially if, you know, with financial aid or grants, um, and you know, books are expensive, right? So I had worked at ShopRite, I had worked at a daycare, I had worked at the Boys and Girls Club. I also worked at Blockbuster, um, which is definitely dating myself. Uh, I, I'm sure you all have heard of Blockbuster and those memes. It was a great place to be as a high schooler on Friday and Saturday night. Um, that's a story for another day. So I saved up all this money. I had opened up a checking account, a student checking account with Wachovia, um, which Wachovia is now Wells Fargo. So again, I'm dating myself, but so I had this checking account with Wachovia and it was a few months into my first semester and I had checked my, you know, I was, I was making a lot of purchases. I was making a lot of payments for, you know, books and food and, you know, essentials that I needed. So I was checking my checking account statement one day and I see that there was a charge for it was like over three hundred dollars and it was also made in California now I knew that I was in Philadelphia Pennsylvania and I had not gone to California so I freaked out you know I was really anxious and scared because I saw this three hundred dollar payment this thing on the charge um, and you know I, I didn't know what to do so I thought about it and I decided to call Wachovia's customer service and the representative I spoke to, you know, I was like crying. It, it was, I was all over the place. However, I called, I spoke to this great representative. I explained to her, you know, what the issue was and how I didn't make the charge. So she went ahead and filed um, a fraudulent investigation, which usually takes about 30 days or so. But, you know, she had reassured me that if I didn't make the charge and I wasn't in California, that I would get my money back after 30 days. Um, so after those 30 days, I did get that because obviously I didn't make that charge. Um, so the lesson learned is identity theft and fraud does happen. You know, there are people out there who are scam artists. And it's sad to say, but that's just a reality that we're living in. So when you're thinking, about red flags or scams, get into the habit of checking, you know, really check your credit card statements, your debit card statements, anything that you have money in. You want to check that regularly and just keep track of your purchases and make sure that you go line by line because, again, the reality is that scam does happen. So that's the number one red flag is to really get into the habit of checking your account. And again, also keeping track of your purchases. So great question, common scams, fraud. Fraudulent activity is a reality. So let's move on to our next question. Um, all right, it says, 
what do I do if I misplace my credit card? Would that hurt my credit score? Alan, do you wanna you wanna take that one? Yes. So if you misplace your credit card, you should immediately contact your credit card provider to deactivate your credit card. If the card has been used, you'll be able to submit a fraudulent claim and your credit score won't be affected. But it's a good habit to frequently check your accounts for any unusual activity. I also see in the chat somebody asked, when should you start working on bettering your credit? I am a sophomore, so does it matter now or do I wait until I get a credit card? So it's definitely important to start building those habits, so paying everything on time. But you can get a credit card as early as 18 years old if you have a verifiable source of income. And typically on a on a regular credit card application, they'll ask you for your personal information, like your name, date of birth, and social security number, your gross annual income. So this is where you're having a job comes into play, your housing situation, if you're renting, if you're owning, your employment information, and the time at your current residence. Yep, and if I can add, Alan, um, you know, again, back to my freshman year in college, um, and I'm sure it's the same thing now. Uh, Alan and I have talked about it before, but these credit card companies know that you just turned 18. You're now an adult, right? So now they're going to be sending you all these offers in the mail. They're going to be trying to get you to open up as many credit cards as you as you want or can. The idea is to really look through their policy and all their fine print because a lot of credit cards, will say, we'll give you a credit line of $5,000, but then you look in the fine print and it says, we're gonna charge you an annual fee of X amount of dollars. So that's something to look out for when you're first you know, getting your credit card. I would suggest to really go for those credit cards that are geared towards students. Um, you know, you won't get that high of a credit limit. However, it will help you, again, like Alan mentioned, Get into the habit of making good financial habits. You want to start off small. Um, I have definitely made that mistake, you know, where I was like that Jay-Z quote that Helen had mentioned earlier, like if you can't buy it twice and you shouldn't buy it, that is true. And I've learned the hard way. Um, so, you know, I'm happy that you guys are asking these questions and there's a lot more questions in the chat box. So we want to try to get them, get through all of them. So. The next question is, can your APR change? So the APR, which is a great question, um, is your annual percentage rate. So can it change? Short answer is yes, it can change. Um, to give you an example, one of those first credit cards that I got as a freshman in college, I, I, I didn't read the fine print. You know, I, didn't, I was not making good financial decisions at all. So, when I saw how much interest was coming, like was being billed to my credit card, like the first couple months, I was like, wait, why is this so high? I looked at the fine print, it was like 22%. So that's 22% of all the, the purchases that you're making within that month. So I started wanting to be, you know, more financial responsible and more financially independent. So what I was doing was I was making purchases on my credit card but then I was paying off my credit card in full by the end of, uh, before the, the payment date. So each month I would make these purchases, but then I was also paying them back in full. So I did this for, it was like over six months. So then I decided to call, you know, the credit card company and I had said, I, and again, this, I had no idea how to do any of this. You know, I was just learning as I went, but I'm happy to give you guys this advice. So. I called my credit card company and I said, you know, I've been a good customer, I've been making good financial decisions and choices, and I've been paying everything back in full, all the purchases I've been making every month. Is there any way of decreasing my APR? They had to, you know, look into my account and I was on hold for a little bit, but it, it didn't really take that much time. So then they said, yes, we can decrease your APR. So again, 
The short answer is yes, your APR can change. However, you need to advocate for yourself. It's important to learn to speak up and also call, you know, I know we're in the day of age of being behind a screen and, you know, texting and messaging online, but phone calls are important too. So remember, if you see anything that's funny on your credit card statement or anything, your student loans, your car loans, you know, your car loans also something that your APR could be a little high, but then you can always call and ask to decrease it. So don't don't be shy about asking those kind of questions, you know, because what's the worst that can happen? They say no, and then you continue for the next few months or a year, and you're making good financial decisions. So that's a great question. Um, now, Alan, I see a few in the chat box, and I'm happy you guys are asking all these questions. So thank you so much. Um, let's see. Yeah, so what somebody, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, Alan. I'm right, yeah. talking so, too much, so you do your thing. <laughs> yeah, so somebody said, what is the difference between available credit and a credit line? So a credit line is what your card is approved to go up to. You can't go past that amount. And once you start actually using your credit card, the, the balance starts decreasing. So then let's say your credit line is 10000 and you made a purchase for 1000 your available credit is now 9,000. So that's what you're able to use. And somebody else asked, when would you use a debit card as opposed to a credit card? Mia, do you want to take that one? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So you know, let's go back to that Jay-Z comment, right? If you can't buy it twice, then maybe you shouldn't buy it. Um, so your debit card versus your credit card. So what we didn't talk about today was savings, but that's another session that Alan and I will be putting on the calendar. So when you want to use your credit card is when you are, there's a few different ways. You either want to try to build your, your credit. You want to try to build that credit score so you can make purchases on your credit card, right, and then pay it back in full. But let's just say, let's give the example of, because this used to happen to me all the time with my Jeep. I had a Jeep Liberty. It was an old, old car. And I was, there was like one issue and after another. The transmission was, the transmission <laughs> failed. The tires were, it was all these things. So it was like, oh, every three months I had to, you know, put some, I had to pay for something at the mechanic. So. The first few times I had money in my savings account because I was, you know, I part of my budgeting, I would try to save a certain amount after paying all my important bills and also paying myself first, which again, we'll talk about it at a, at a different time. Um, I was saving all this money, so I had money in my savings account. So the first few times I was at the mechanic and I used my savings to pay for it because savings is for emergencies, right? Then it got to the point where I needed to get things fixed on my car that I could not afford at that given time. So I had to make the choice of, do I hold off on not fixing it and putting it on my credit card or what should I do? So what I did was I looked at my budget for the next, it was like, I looked at my budget for the next three months. I looked at all the money that was gonna be coming in I subtracted all my bills, I subtracted my savings, and then I saw, okay, in three months, I can pay off my credit card in full. But then I had to keep that interest, that APR in mind too. So when, when would you use a debit card versus when would you use a credit card? There's a bunch of different ways, but the most important part is don't use your credit card to go on a shopping spree. You know, don't go to the mall and say, I'm going to go to Nordstrom and buy, you know, $2,000 worth of stuff because I have a $2,000 credit limit. Now, let's just say that you are making, you know, thousands of dollars each month and you have all this money left over after you pay your bills. Then, you know, you can pay yourself first however you see fit. However, if you cannot afford to buy it twice, then reconsider buying it at all. So just keep that in mind. Um, credit cards are a way 
they're here to help us, but they can also impact us very negatively if they're not used correctly. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and, and great question, by the way, too. So let's see. Yeah, sorry, um, me. I just wanted to add, it's also important oh, to ahead. know that as we recall for our credit score calculation, payment history was worth 35% of our credit score calculation. So then as long as you're building that, you're not going over your 30% um, utilization rate, you're not masking out your credit cards, um, it's safe to use a credit card you're, where you're only buying things that you know you can pay back. And if you're mm -hmm. trying to make any big purchase that's over your limit, if you have the financials for it, then you would use a debit card if that helps. Yep, yep, for sure. Thank you, Alan. Um, now I see this other, let's see. Sometimes I get credit card offers in the mail. Are those scams or legit offers? Now that's a great question. So I had touched back on it a little bit about, you know, when I was a freshman in college and I got all this mail from all these different credit card companies, companies that I didn't even know existed. Um, so to know the difference between are they a scam or are they legit offers is to do your research. We have the beauty of, you know, being able to Google and have the internet at the tip of our fingers, you know. So if you get something in the mail or you get an email that just like doesn't seem right, research it. Um, I definitely love researching, you know, different um, credit card companies or student loan providers, you know, and looking up their reviews. Sometimes you can spend hours looking at reviews, but then it gives you a really nice idea of what people experience with that company and also the feedback. You know, you can see what kind of credit scores they had to get approved, you know, um, especially if you're trying to work on your building your credit. Um, so definitely Google, you know, or whatever web browser that you have research these companies before you sign off on anything. And again, read that fine print. That fine print is really important because you can get locked into a contract that you had no idea had all these really fishy policies, you know, because you didn't read it. Um, anything to add on that, Alan? Um, no, you've said everything. Okay. I. Uh -huh. I see another question here that says, what age do you recommend to get a credit card? Also, do you have any recommendations on how to pick your first card or where to start? Yeah, so you can get a credit card as early as 18, as long as you can prove any source of income, but it's important to know how to properly use it because that's the tricky part where a lot of students, they don't know how to properly manage their credit cards and then they get themselves thrown into debt, which you definitely don't want. But if you know how to properly use it, you stay within your 30% utilization rate, um, you can get one as early as 18. And you should definitely do your research on the different types of credit cards that are available. As Mia mentioned, there's a difference between your interest rates and you definitely need to read the fine line and I'm gonna share a resource that helped me picking my first credit card. And it's a quiz where it tailors a credit card to your specific needs. And let me just drop that link there. And then you guys can use that to find any credit cards tailored to your specific needs. But yeah, definitely do a lot of research before committing to anything permanent. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, um, one of the, the thoughts that came to mind, especially when you're talking about credits, like, why is, why is your credit score important? You know, and Alan touched um, on that, but I just kind of want to end it with, you know, some, some last remarks about credit. What you do today will impact you in the future. I am, I'm now 33 years old. 
I haven't been in college in quite a while, but those decisions that I made once I turned 18 haunted me for a really long time. And, you know, if you can make those right financial decisions and choices, you don't have to end up, you know, like me or like those people who are trying to fix and build their credit for years, you know, so. And credit, your credit score is important for a few different things, but, you know, if you're trying to lower your APR for your student loans, if you had to take any out, you know, whether they're federal or private, or let's just say that you're looking to buy a house, you know, they're going to look at your credit reports. They're going to look at your scores. They're going to see every single thing that you have done, any payments that you missed, any late payment, you know, all those things are really important um, when you're looking to buy a car. You know, I had to get a, a that Jeep that I had that had all those mechanical issues. I had to get a, I didn't finally get rid of it, which is a shame because I had put so much money into it, but I then had to go and find a new car. And the companies that were getting back to me were charging me such a high interest rate. And that's because of all those decisions that I made when I was younger and I didn't know better. But, you know, you guys all participating today know better now, right? And if you have any questions at all, you want to talk through anything that, like, that is about credit or credit scores or student loans or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to put my email address in the chat box so you guys, you know, and it could be between you and I. It doesn't have to be a bigger conversation, but I want everybody to feel confident in making these good financial decisions. So now before we end, I am going to share my screen again one more time. Um, so let's go here. All right. So I hope you guys all enjoyed Alan and I's presentation today. I certainly love working with Alan, and we hope to see you guys again in the future. Now. Next week, next Wednesday, March 10th, from 1 to 2, we're going to talk about credit versus debit. And we're going to really dive even deeper than we did today into all those little specifics about what credit and debit is. Um, so at the end of today, I'm going to send all participants a follow-up email with the link to register for next week. And, you know, feel free to share it with your classmates, with your friends, your family, your educators, students, whoever, you know, the more the merrier. We want everybody to, again, be financially fit, right? Um, also in that email will be a quick little survey. Alan and I are trying to figure out the best times and days that work for participants, whether you're a student, you're a volunteer, or you're an educator. We want to know those best times and days of the week to be hosting these webinars. Um, and then also part of the survey will be just one question. What was your biggest takeaway from today's session? Um, all participants who participated today will be receiving a certificate um, that you can put on your college applications or your job resumes. So again, you'll see that email from me by the end of the day, but again, thank you all for participating. Alan, thank you so much for today. Great information that you um, had for all of us. And you, with yeah. that, thank you, Alan. So with that, I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to end this session. So I hope to see you guys all next week. Take care. Bye, everyone.